We found a post on Twitter by NBA Central, which shows Bleacher Report's 2017 NBA redraft. Now, we have some thoughts on this, as well as our very own redraft. Let's get into this. I'm looking at Jason Tatum at number one. Yes. Yes. From this draft class of 2017, Jason Tatum is still, he is my number one. I totally agree with this list on that one. I I, I mean, what? He just made it. He is the first, what? Eastern Conference NBA Finals renamed the Bird Award. I mean, what do they call it? Yeah, Eastern <laughs> Conference Finals MVP. MVP, right. yeah. yeah. Eastern was... Conference Finals MVP that they just renamed. <laughs> what is it mm-hmm. called? Larry Bird? Yeah, I think Award. it's the Bird. Yeah, 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 you know, so, and not only that, I mean, if you think about the work that he has done in his five seasons in the league, his con- consistent progression and improvement in his Ability to showcase and be to do both offense and defense. I mean, notable the way he locked up the Nets. I just what what we gonna do about that? And that's recent, but what he's done in the past. And we're talking about the overall work. If you want to select him, if you had, if the coaches had the lens five years from the time they drafted to see what this player would do, Jason Tatum obviously from this list of 2017 draft picks would have been number one anyway. So yeah, absolutely, Jason Tatum. Oh. I agree. Absolutely. Yeah. Jason Tatum is number one for me, too. We're talking about a three-time NBA All-Star. He's just getting started. Like, Jason Tatum led the Boston Celtics deep into the playoffs Mm -hmm. as a young player. So, yeah, he's definitely number one. And and it was easy to select him. Oh, very easy. And think about it. He led them. Like, he is their franchise. They are building a team around him. I mean, he's become that player. So, yeah, number one. And he's showing up. Jason Tatum on this list. I don't know what they did back in 2017, but in 2022 um, with a redraft of 2017, Jason Tatum number one. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. Okay, so Bleacher Report has Bam Adebayo at number two. Do you have any problems with this? I don't have Bam Adebayo at number two. I don't. I actually have Donovan Mitchell. I know. I know. I have Donovan Mitchell because I just believe that when we're talking about so I just think he was drafted to the wrong team. I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes I feel that way, and I'm probably saying that now. But like Jason Tatum, although the, um, Donovan Mitchell may not have had notable success when we're talking about awards and accolades, but a player, solid. He is who the franchise built themselves around. Yes, he had Rudy Gobert as his backup, but at the end of the day, Donovan Mitchell is Utah Jazz. He may not be if they, you know, trade him to somewhere else but right now as we speak he is Utah Jazz and he has been able to lead the Utah Jazz to the playoffs multiple seasons so yeah and and his numbers speak for itself like what I just sometimes I believe that the franchise that you're drafted to does matter and how successful you may be overall as a player so Donovan Mm -hmm. Mitchell is my number two he is also my number two as well (laughs) Three-time All-Star drafted to the wrong place at the wrong time. Absolutely. You know, that's just what it boils down Mm -hmm. to. And just think about it. Yes, he led them to the playoffs year after year, but they just could not go deep. But I think if he had a more well-rounded supporting cast throughout those years, the results may have been different. Yes, I agree. 100%. I agree with that on Donovan Mitchell and somebody else on my list as well. But yeah, Donovan Mitchell, number two for me. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, Bleacher Report has Donovan at number three. Clearly, we do not. Mm-hmm. I actually have Bam Adebayo at number three. Ah, uh-huh. oh, okay. yeah. Bam, okay. three time all defense, first time mm-hmm. all star here recently. You know, he he really thought he should have won Defensive Player of the Year last season and probably the year before. A big staple for the Miami Heat, you know. In recent years, just a defense and just how big and strong he is. I have him at number three on my list. I'm not mad at that number three. I'm not mad at that number three. However, I actually have OG Ananobi. And I think that because he is with Toronto, he he's overseen the Toronto franchise. I don't believe get as much love as they need to get. That's just number one in the NBA. You know, the whole scheme of the NBA, how they promote and how they do their thing. I don't think the Toronto Raptors get enough. But I do believe that OG Ananobi for me will be number three because his overall body of work speaks for itself. And not only that, he is a two he is a 2019 NBA champion, and he was a pivotal part of that uh, championship run through that 2019 season. So I just think that what he 
in his clutch mm-hmm. on that side pocket from three. <laughs> yeah. What? So, yes, and he's good defensively. So I just think that for me overall, I think because he has a championship, mm-hmm. again, the team, if the NBA promoted the Toronto Raptors like they would, like they should do other teams, I think he would be more notable. Now, I agree. He did have Kawhi Leonard on that roster when they won the 2019 championship. But OG Ananobi played a really big part in that overall win. And so, yeah, I have him as number um, three. All right, number four, uh, I'm looking at Jerry Allen on the redraft. I do not have Jerry Allen that high on my list, but I do have Lonzo Ball. Oh, what? Yeah, I do have Lonzo Ball. Now, considering how much recognition he received prior to the draft and how LeVar Ball pushed for the Los Angeles Lakers Mm -hmm. to pull him at number two, it's a shame that they didn't keep him. I have Lonzo at number four. He's kind of bounced around the league in his first couple of seasons, right? You know, Lakers, Pels, and now he's with the Bulls. I'm hoping he could really show me that I did not make a mistake by putting him number four on my NBA redraft. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't have Lonzo Ball at number four. I don't have Jared Allen at number four, but I do have Bam. For your same reasons. I have Bam at a bio at number four. Same reasons that you have. I just, for me, OG at this war, was warranted for me to put him at three, but I have Bam at number four for your same reasons. I'm not going to be hashed that, but it's the same thing. Okay. All right. So John Collins at number five. Now I like John Collins, but he is not number five for me. My number five is Kyle Kuzma, another former Laker who was kind of pushed aside, who has also kind of bounced around just a little bit, you know, now with the Washington Wizards. Kyle Kuzma at his size at 6'9", 220 pounds, the way that he can just handle the ball, uh, push the push the pace, and what he contributed to the Los Angeles Lakers and will in the future contribute to the Washington Wizards. I'm looking forward to seeing more of that. So I have him at number five on my list. Okay. I don't have um, John Collins. I do not have Kyle Kuzma number five. But who I do have, I mentioned that a player drafted to the wrong franchise, De'Aaron Fox for me. If Diane, if De'Aaron Fox was probably drafted to another franchise at another time, Sacramento Kings, I'm sorry, is just not it for him. And I hate to be the one to say this. I just hope that he's not – I feel like he's wasting his talent there. Hopefully with this new coach, new players on the roster, he would be able to now – we would be able to see more of him, right? And De'Aaron Fox, now although he has – I just think wrong franchise. If he was a point guard for another franchise, we'd probably be talking about him like we talk about – um Lonzo Ball, I mean, although mm-hmm. he's not as injured, he's a little bit more reliable than Lonzo Ball, but I just think that he's missing out on his notoriety. He's missing out on his visibility because he's with the Sacramento Kings. I think he's missing out on his potential success as an overall NBA player, but he's a solid player. Like, you lock up some people, right? And I think we yeah. tend to miss that. And people, and some players, as you mentioned in the past, run from him. Yep. So, <laughs> so I have De'Aaron Fox. Number five on the original 2017 draft list, I kept him as number five on my list. I actually agree with Bleacher Report's ranking of De'Aaron Fox at number six. The way he can lock up on defense, you know, his small stature, his speed, you don't find that very often. So I agree with De'Aaron Fox at number six. Okay, that's fair. My number six is actually Lonzo Ball. And I put Lonzo Ball at number six because of his inability to be available. That's it. That's it. But his ability to play on the court is is valuable to any team that he's on. It was valuable to the Lakers. It was valuable to the Pels. It is valuable to the Bulls. He's just not there. And I, for me, if someone was looking at the lens five seasons from 2017 and his inability, with although he had the skills, he would not have been number uh, two on the list. He just wouldn't, even with all the hype. If he can complete a full season, because when he's not on the court and when he's not doing his best, you know, on the court, the team suffers. I think they do, whatever team he's on. So I have him at number six. Mm-hmm. I hope that he, his number, his 2023 season is way better. I hope he can, when he finally comes, it will be the catalyst to help the Bulls go deep in the playoffs. I think so. So Lonzo Ball for me is number six. Nice. Now for number seven, they have Lonzo Ball, which is so interesting to me that a lot of people agree that he should not have been number two in the 2017 draft. But for number seven, for me, I have OG Ananobi. 
Yeah. You know, 2019 champion. You mm-hmm. already, you know, touched on all of his accolades. I think he is just barely scratching the surface of his genius on the court. So, yeah, OG at number seven for me. I have Jared Allen at number seven. I'm just going to be honest right now. As we get deeper into this top 10, it was very difficult for me to select based off the 2017 um, draft class. I'm just going to be honest. But I have Jared mm-hmm. Allen at number um, seven. Jared Allen, I mean, he's an NBA all-star. He just you know, got his first NBA all-star vote for 2022. He, he is one of those those centers that I'll see a future with. Like, you know, if you have him on your team, he's going to be one of those people that you're going to like, oh, you, you know, I think he'd be somebody that tra- can be tradable. Cleveland Cavaliers is a great spot for him, especially. He was actually really decent with the Brooklyn Nets as he continues to develop. I think, as you mentioned, he's he's one of those players who's just scratching the surface. Who just, <laughs> he, he's, he's an added, he's a nice addition to any team. And I think he'll be a starter for a long time. So yeah, Jared Allen for me. Ooh, that's so funny because I don't have Jared Allen in my top 10 at Mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. Number eight for me is Dylan Brooks. I had to dig deep. Now, for every NBA draft, there's always a player like, you know, low in the first round, deep in the second round, who eventually shows himself like, look, I may have been drafted number 45, like Mm -hmm. Dylan Brooks Mm -hmm. for my number eight. But you know what? I deserve to be in the top 10. And Dylan has shown that to me. He is one of... I can't say he's the face of the Grizz. We know that. But when you think of the Grizz, you cannot talk about the Memphis Grizzlies without mentioning Dylan Brooks's name. You just can't. I had, I looked at Dylan Brooks. He's an honorable mention for a top 10 for me. And the reason why I did not add him is because I believe this last season is when we started to notice him for me. When I'm talking about overall work and we're drafting top 10, I'm looking at someone who can potentially move the needle on a franchise. I know he does that, but I wonder if we would have been talking about Dylan Brooks two years ago. Would Dylan Brooks really be that name a year ago? I just don't know. Now, he may have been, but I think we talk about him more because what he was able to do in this last 2022 NBA season, along with John Morant, I did not put him on my list. I do understand why you have him. I don't disagree with that at all. He just wasn't on my list, but I do have him listed as an honorable mention, but I don't have that. For number eight, I actually have John Collins. Oh, okay. I went with the list, John Collins, number eight. Yeah, I just I just put John Collins in number eight when I'm looking about, when I'm thinking of the list of everybody that's on the 2017 NBA class and I look at this bleacher reports, I'm just like, yeah, John Collins is number eight for me. I don't really have much else to say about it. <laughs> okay. Now, number nine, they have Derek White. Now, Derek played a huge role with the Boston Celtics in the finals recently, but I don't think he's number nine. My number nine is Malik Monk. Yep, pulled Malik Monk up from, where was Malik? He was not in the top 10. He was not in the top 10, um, but... Yeah, I don't know who he was. He was first round for sure. I just don't remember what number it was. Yeah, Malik Monk. Now, again, we talked about De'Aaron Fox. We talked about Sabonis. Malik Monk is also with the Sacramento Kings. They're going to be pretty good. And a lot of that is going to just really hinge on just how good Malik Monk is. So, yeah, Malik at number um, nine for me. But my number nine, I actually have Kyle Kuzma. I have Kyle Kuzma because Kyle Kuzma – I agree with everything that you said about Kyle Kuzma. My only thing with Kyle Kuzma is that he has had opportunities to take over a franchise and he has not. I just I want him to do I, – I, can I rely on him to be the – I don't even know how to say it. And maybe that's not what his role is. But Kyle Kuzma has more to offer right now, and I don't think he does that. Just I want more from him because I believe he can give us more. I think that the trade from the Lakers – it delayed, if you will, his ability to be more successful in the league, I think. So I've got Kuzma at number nine. I'm still going to be checking for Kyle Kuzma because I do like his play. I do agree with everything that you said. I do believe that he can be um, number two in somebody's franchise. I just don't know where. And yeah. hopefully, I'm not sure if it's with the Wizards, but I think he has something that's untapped. That's maybe the better way to say it. I think Kyle Kuzma has something that is untapped. And once he taps into whatever that is, mm-hmm. I think he'll be really, really great in the league. He'll be a superstar in the league, but it's going to take something else. And I don't know what that is right now. For me. Yeah, see, that's the thing about Kuzma, right? Everywhere that he's played, 
I don't think he's had an opportunity to yeah. take over the franchise, though, like you mentioned, or to be the the A, the number one star. He's had to play with LeBron. Now he's playing with Bradley Bill. Yeah. Those are their teams. There's no room for Kyle Kuzma to be like the top dog with the Wizards and definitely wasn't with the Lakers. Yeah, maybe, though, if he can find a way to be number two, because, again, the number one always needed number two. I don't care what nobody says. Yeah. Maybe he can work his way to that. But I believe he has that where he – there is something, an untapped potential in Kyle Kuzma. I think that once he gets that, we'll see more of him and he will be somebody that the, the league needs to be on, on notice for. So I have him at number nine right now overall. And I think that, as I mentioned, the trade is, I don't know, something about that Lakers trade with them, Lonzo Ball, Hart. Mm -hmm. I just didn't like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. My number 10 is a former Laker. In fact, Four of my top 10 are former Lakers, and my number 10 is Josh Hart. And you kind of mentioned him just a minute ago. Yeah. Josh Hart, all heart. I mean, really a 3 and D player. Yeah. Didn't get an opportunity to shine much with the no. Los Angeles Lakers. Um, went to the Pels, and, you know. But now that he's with Portland, Ooh. you know, I mean, that was such a great pickup. Yeah. Oh, I cannot yeah. wait to yeah. see what Josh Hart does with his career moving forward. I agree. Solid play. in defense? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. I also have Josh Hart at number 10. So <laughs> for everything that you said. Uh, okay. <laughs> Let's just take a quick look at the actual original 2017 oh, draft. Boy. Looking at Mark Hill's <laughs> Oh, You talk about injury prone, injury plagued at the beginning of his career, drafted to the Sixers. I don't even think he suited up 10 games for them. They don't quote me on that, but I could be wrong. You know, he's had, oh, my God. Then Lonzo, another injury-prone player. It's crazy. The 17 draft was pretty weak considering, considering. the first 10 that were selected. Absolutely. I, I have to agree with you overall, yes. And if you think about some of these players that are on the original draft list, they're nowhere near anybody's top 10. No. Like, I think there's only three players right now. Yeah, three players that are on people that are on this Bleach Reports top ten, and if you check any of the comments in this particular post, they're not even listed. These other these other players are not listed. Somebody, somebody's comment when they listed their redraft, they had a question mark next to Jonathan Isaac. Oh, like yeah, poor Jonathan. Yeah, I, it, it's it's really sad. Frank Nilakina just never really got an opportunity to shine with the New York Knicks. Dennis Smith Jr. I mean. Still in the NBA, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. So, so you, you know, at the end of the day, though, with this draft class, you can be drafted top of the class, middle of the class, bottom of the class. If you just don't have it when you get to the NBA, your success is going to be derived not on what you've done in the past, but you can do in the future, and that's just what it boils down to. 